This book is an offering for every person who finds an attraction to its premise and title. If you're curious about how to enhance your health, well-being, and capacity for joy by enhancing how you cope with stress, then this book is for you. It has been a labor of love to engage deeply in writing this book. The themes are partially reflective of my own personal journey, as well as the journeys of many women who have shaped my life, including family, mentors, friends, mentees, and those I observed over the years from up close and from afar. The most important thing I want you to know is that I believe you can experience a life of joy and wellness. In fact, I'm confident that you can. You can achieve success on your journey to health, including mind, body, and spiritual health. You can have healthy relationships. You can have career satisfaction. And you can have deep, soul-stirring, nurturing relationships. The first relationship for you to nurture is the one you have with yourself. We are all on a journey of self-discovery, self-care, and self-actualization. Self-actualization means to be the best possible version of ourselves. However, your success may be tied closely to the success of those you love, your family members, friends, and loved ones. Quite possibly, you dedicate yourself to ensuring their well-being so much that you leave yourself off your own to-do list. You might even continue to neglect yourself until you receive an alarming wake-up call that may include physical, emotional, or interpersonal suffering or pain. You may see the signs all around you. There may be women in your life who gave all of their energy for the betterment of others. They ignored silent and then not-so-silent symptoms that they, too, needed attention and nurturing. But perhaps these women were too busy caregiving, and they forgot to care for themselves. Perhaps they were caring for so many others and didn't know how to care without carrying the load of those they loved. In fact, you may notice that you have a lot in common with these women. Yet, how do you disentangle others' needs from your own? How can you care without carrying everyone else's stuff wherever you go? How do you make your load lighter and easier to bear without neglecting those you love and care for? You may even wonder, when is it okay to take time to think about my own well-being? It is permissible to prioritize your own health. It's not selfish to focus on self-care. As caregivers and supporters of others, making time to understand how to sustain your own health is actually an act of generosity. You cannot optimally help others if you're not well. If you cannot prioritize yourself for the sake of your own well-being, can you do it for those who are depending on your assistance? Can you do it for the young ones who are observing, taking in, and modeling their lives after what they see you do?